It's like, why do you want to buy that home? Well, it's a pretty home. Well, why do you think it's a pretty home? It reminds me of the home that I had when I was a child. Okay, why do you want a home like that? Well, it reminds me of all the special times I had with my family. I really want to buy a home so that I can have family holidays here. I really want to have that living room or that you know open concept dining room so that I can fit all my family. Okay, now I understand why you're asking for the things you're asking for on your wish list and the motivation behind them. It's like when I send you homes to look at, I'm not going to ignore those needs because I know how much they mean to you emotionally. And that's, you know, part of my job is to be able to push you in the right direction, even if maybe what you're saying on the surface isn't exactly what you're needing. So that is helpful. It's like if I understand that real true motivation behind it, now we can get to the homes that are actually going to work for you or the things that are going to fit your long term goals. Welcome everyone to episode four of Progress with Pagano. I'm with a special guest here today, Sarah Busselwitz. Right? Mm-hmm. Good. Um, so I'm super excited and happy for this episode because Sarah is an expert not only in real estate, but she's also an expert in mindset, spirituality, and nutrition. And I think these are all tied in with each other. And I'm so happy to share a lot of insights into Sarah's mind and to help you guys become a better person and to also improve your business by using these tactics. So without further ado, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on here today. I'm so excited to do this with you. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. So I mean, kind of just want to jump right into it with you because we you know, met beforehand and went over a little bit of topics and things to talk about. And there's so much to go over. So I just want to hop right in with you. And you told me this amazing story. And this is coming back from adversity because in this industry, there is a lot of adversity. And this is probably most industries, but real estate in particular, whether it's losing an offer, um, not being able to sell a property or not being able to get as much return as possible, cash flow. There's a lot of adversity you might hit and, and run into in real estate. And early on um, in your real estate career, you had a, a, some adversity, right? You, you had a, a magnificent story about losing an offer. And can you talk about that a little bit? Because I know, if you know what I'm referring to from our, from our talk. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, tell me a little bit about that and how you came back from that. Yeah, no, obviously this is a uh, field where there's a ton of rejection, a ton of failure. And it, as someone who maybe wasn't so uh, adverse to that in the beginning stages of my career, it has definitely been like a, a wild ride to learn to overcome that and be okay with it. Um, but especially with losing offers, you know, it's, you're constantly being rejected, you're con- constantly being told no. Um, and that builds character, it builds resilience, and it builds, uh, you know, just a tougher, thicker shell for life in general. But especially with, you know, my clients who do feel that emotionally, real estate in particular, it's an emotional ride. And having to hold that space for them and let them know that it's okay to feel the way they feel, but we're gonna pick it up and keep going um, has been probably one of the best parts of my job. I think it's my favorite part of my job is to hold space for those people and uh, be that like sounding board for them and the motivation to keep going. But I did have a client who, you know, was specifically more of an emotional person. And to get that text that says, you know, okay, I'm going to stop being a sad potato. I'm going to get off the couch. I'm going to keep going. Uh, it's, it makes you proud. You go, okay, you let that person feel out the emotions and you want to support them and motivate them to keep going through it. And I don't think you can be a person who doesn't understand the emotional aspects of this field and hold space for your clients and, and keep them going. Yeah, that's amazing. And like that relates to one of my favorite quotes of all time. Have you ever seen the movie Rocky? I haven't. I hate to be in Philadelphia oh, oh and gosh. say that. Is that embarrassing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's this there's this quote, um, and when it comes to you know anything, but more specifically to your career and to life, it doesn't matter about how how hard you can hit. It matters about how hard you can get hit and keep going. Mm. Yes. And life will beat you up. So um, that that's awesome. And like you had mentioned, like being a couch potato. Like, so tell us a little bit about your background. Um, how did you get started in this industry? 
but also what was your background leading up to this industry? Yeah, I guess that gives it good context of why I'm able to do that. Um, so I actually went to school for and studied nutrition. So I started as a nutrition coach um, and that was uh, so much fun. Obviously I love fitness, I love um, eating well, cooking. I mean, those are all passions in my life that I still you know, hold true to this day. Um, but yeah, I was a nutrition coach for a couple of years and it was very heavy. People go through really hard things in life, things that are emotional, and it's more than what you think on surface level. So I I did that for many years where you are the sounding board for the person who's suffering maybe with an eating disorder or with an abusive home life. Um, And it really helps you not only, you know, be a stronger person for them, but helps you put in perspective um, what it's like to be knocked down and keep going. And it's inspiring to hold space for people like that and to encourage them to be the best versions of themselves. And it helps you also to reflect on your inner world and make you a better person. Um, But eventually I did burn out a little bit from that. And I had always been like an HDTV kid is what I called myself. I don't even know if that's a thing, but Um. that's how I refer to myself. And I loved watching like House Hunters and like Flip or Flop growing up. Um, And real estate was one of those passions that like nagged me in the back of my head and I could not let it go. So I did a complete 180 and ended up getting my real estate license. But those practices and those uh, uh, that work that I did with the clients is the same, but in a different magnitude, just on a different topic. Right, so that, that's awesome. Um, and you know, circling back to what you said, when what you put into your body, and this is kind of what, you know, your background, right? What you put into your body is your output as well, right? Mm-hmm. So like what you put in, what you get out, and how do you think this correlates to like how you're eating, what your nutrition is like, to how you feel and how you perform. Do you think there's like a direct correlation there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, if you, you know, treat your body like crap, you're going to feel like crap. If you, you know, don't take the time to acknowledge where you could grow as a person, that's going to show up not only in your fitness and your health, but in every aspect of your life. So I know you're big on like financial freedom and money mindset and that as you don't value yourself as a person also shows up in the way you value your money right and you also um have a background in mindset and you actually went through mindset coaching Mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that yeah so it went hand in hand really with like my nutrition coaching so i did take a course on you know uh how to be a nutrition and wellness coach. And you would think on surface level that would come down to, oh, macros and carbs and protein and all of that. But what I did get out of that was it's not that. And that's what everybody thinks it is. But it's really about digging for the why behind the why. And that line of questioning can carry over into everything else. So instead of just saying, hey, Alex, you know, why do you want to lose weight? And you go, well, I want to look better. And I go, okay, all right, let's write that down as a goal. I want to go, well, why do you want to lose weight? And you go, well, you know, I kind of want to look better in my bathing suit. (laughs) And it's like, well, why do you want to look better in your bathing suit? Well, I don't know. I I want to impress my girlfriend. It's like, well, why do you want to impress your girlfriend? Well, maybe I'm not so secure in my relationship. I think they're going to leave me. Now we're getting to like some deeper emotional needs that we need to fulfill here and work on rather than you just thought you wanted to lose weight because you wanted to be hot. It's like, that's not the motivation. And when you fall off of your goals, I can't motivate you to get back onto your goals if I don't know why you're actually working for them. Right, so it's un- unpeeling those layers, those defense mechanisms that people have. Yeah. Know, going through those seven layers to find out the root cause of actually what the true reason is. And you can relate that to real estate. Like, why do people not like that home or want to buy this house or have specific needs? Mm-hmm. Kind of peel the layers like, hey, Here's how I can relate this to you. Hey, why? Why this? Why that? Kind of figure that out too. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, why do you want to buy that home? Well, it's a pretty home. Well, why do you think it's a pretty home? It reminds me of the home that I had when I was a child. Okay. Why do you want a home like that? Well, it reminds me of all the special times I had with my family. I really want to buy a home so that I can have family holidays here. I really want to have that living room or that, you know, open concept dining room so that I can fit all my family. Okay, now I understand why you're asking for the things you're asking for on your wish list and the motivation behind them. It's like when I send you homes to look at, 
I'm not gonna ignore those needs because I know how much they mean to you emotionally. And that's, you know, part of my job is to be able to push you in the right direction, even if maybe what you're saying on the surface isn't exactly what you're needing. So that is helpful. It's like if I understand that real true motivation behind it, now we can get to the homes that are actually going to work for you or the things that are going to fit your long-term goals. Yeah, I think people in general are, are so closed and they're not willing to just say, hey, like here's my whole life, here's how I feel, this is the true reason. You have to build that relationship with them and earn people's trust because without the trust, then you'll never really get to know who the person is and what their needs truly are. Yeah, and yeah. some people don't even know what their own needs are. So if you can help them uncover that, yeah. you're even more valuable. Right, so helping them understand actually what they want is as as much as important as a skill than listening to them and understanding what they think they want. Yeah, well, the act of listening then will come in with like really paying attention to not just the words, but what are they saying in between the words. Mm, okay, and that's something like I want to talk to you more about. Like, what is active listening? Because I know you've mentioned it before to me. But you know, explain to the audience like what active listening is and how they can implement that with their sales pitch or, or or relationship building with their sales. Yeah, no, it's actually something that's really important to me because as someone going into real estate, being more of an introverted person, I was really nervous about, well, I'm not that extra and I'm not that big personality. I'm not the person who's like that you see on the billboards that are stereotypical real estate agent. But with that personality comes somebody who's thinking about what they're going to say to you before you're ready to even, you know, like you're saying words and they're already thinking about the words that are going to be coming out of their mouth next, as opposed to active listening. I'm listening to every word that's coming out of your mouth and not thinking about what I'm going to say to you to try to impress you or sell you. I'm going to be able to say back to you what I've heard and reflect back to you what I think you need. And that's going to make you feel seen. If I'm not truly listening to the words you're saying and I just want to say the right thing because I think that's going to make you like me or want to work with me, that's going to do the opposite. You're going to be, you know, kind of put off by me because you don't think I actually understand you. Wow, that is so important. And I think that everyone who's listening to that needs to implement that in their business, in their life right now because that will truly do wonders in your business. It's a game changer. Yeah. It's a complete game changer. And it's across the board, even, you know, in real estate and in relationship building. Obviously, you know, this business is very much about building relationships and who you know. And people are always like, well, how do I make friends or how do I make connections? It's be a genuine, active listener. Be like engaged in people's lives. Want to know more about them, understand them and not think about yourself so much or trying to impress somebody else. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. (laughs) <laughs> like I just need to take a sip of coffee to <laughs> you soak it in that's yeah. life changing stuff seriously like, yeah. you, like even if the one person who listens to this takes that and implements that you, you change at least one life mm-hmm. or one person implement. yeah you don't even have to be in this business but it applies to business it applies to friendships it applies to family it's just listen to what people are saying and they will value you as a person so much more than if you are trying to sell yourself to them. Yeah, and I think that goes a long way. I think everyone's trying to, you know, suffocate people with words. Mm-hmm. Take a step back, listen, and then go off of what that person's saying and relate that back to them. Mm-hmm. That's my approach with it. So that's amazing. I'm definitely going to take that in. And use that tomorrow, today, instantly, right now. <laughs> There's no no time to wait on that one. Um, and you're also into fitness, so like, obviously, with fitness, you know, nutrition, there comes fitness, and they're kind of hand in hand. But what are some like activities you like to do? Like, how do you stay fit? Yeah, no, that's changed a lot over the years. Which I mean, it's great. I love to keep things interesting. I get bored pretty quick quickly, so I think. Switching it up and having a good time is important. I used to be pretty into like going to the gym regularly and then I got very heavily into yoga. And then right after, well, when the pandemic hit, then obviously it put me out of a gym routine. And that was a huge adjustment for me because I was never like an at home workout girly. Um, But it taught me to do like Pilates videos on YouTube and get creative with it. So right now I'm in that space of, I do a little bit of mix of like at home YouTube videos. I love to go for a walk. 
anything in nature, like going on a hike. I, I just, yeah, I like to try it all. Yeah, so staying active with your body, even if it doesn't mean going into a gym and you know squatting, it could be anything. Yeah, fitness yeah. is what it means to you. It's not what it means to somebody else. You can make it whatever you want it to be. I know, like this is like class saying, like when there's an opportunity to take the stairs, take the stairs. Oh, always. Yeah, <laughs> I have no shame being the one who's winded when I get to the top of the stairs. Yeah. It's just little things that they add up. Like you don't think about it. Like oh, I'm just gonna walk here instead of getting an Uber. Like those extra miles and those extra steps really do add up and they really do make a difference in your life. They do, yeah. And it makes you feel like even if you don't have time to make it to the gym, if you've taken the steps to be as active as you can throughout your workday, then you're in a better position than somebody who hasn't taken those extra steps. I think that makes you a better person in, in your business too. Yeah, definitely. You, you know, you train your brain. Like everything is so instant gratification nowadays where if you take this, this slower, more challenging way, you're gonna take that into your business too, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. Well, I took the stairs today, so I'm gonna go the extra effort. He's already took the extra effort to not take the elevator. I'm gonna do the extra effort when it comes to doing my calls. I did my 20 calls today. Well, I have time to do another 20 calls. I'm gonna do an extra 20 calls today. Mm -hmm. So you can implement that, and it's all about changing your mindset because your fitness routine and the things that you challenge in your brain are going to directly correlate to your business, so. Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely taking the shortcut and rewiring your brain not to take the shortcut. Is it easy for me to send a text message to a follow up on a client? Hell yeah. Is it easy for them to ignore it? Absolutely. Can I make a phone call and have to have an actual conversation with them? Is that a lot harder? Yes, but I'm going to find out a lot more about them that way. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's definitely one thing that has really been integrated into our industry but also all industries is the use of technology especially ai mm. like people are constantly being contacted by the person whether it's through systems like salesforce or different like drip campaigns or constant communication but nothing will ever be picking up the phone and giving someone a call mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing makes me feel worse than when I get the text messages that have like the date and time stamp on the end. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you you scheduled it, yes. And has technology made our lives and our jobs so much easier? Yeah, but when I get that impersonal scheduled text, I, that wouldn't be the person that I would choose to work with. Right, right, I agree. Awesome. One of these things that I wanna to talk to you about is Switching it up when it comes to you know where you're at in life and you feel like you're in a place or a plateau that you want to get out of and, and go to new places, switching it up. And you told me something really interesting, and it's try to be childlike. Mm. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that's been like my favorite thing, and I mean, I, I think it holds true to I get bored with things very easily. So this is probably why it's been such a big game changer in my life. Um, but whenever you hit like a plateau, it it serves you well to go, how can I have more fun doing this? It's not meant to be a reason for you to think you're failing when you're stuck. It's you're probably just not having enough fun. <laughs> so that's my favorite thing to do with work, with fitness. Um, and I know the example that we had talked about, it was like if you're experiencing a plateau in the gym and you're feeling really bummed and down out about it, it's. It, maybe you always wanted to learn how to do a handstand. So now you've implemented some handstand training into your gym routine. And how fun is that? Like you're having a good time, you're learning something new, and oh my God, your plateau is probably gonna bust through the roof because you've switched up your training without being logical about it. You didn't logic your way into it saying, well, I have to do this many more reps or this, that, like that's boring. Like try to, try to have some fun and you're gonna push through it without even realizing. Yeah, <laughs> I have an idea. If you have, like, let's say like every day you, you do some sort of prospecting or making calls. Well, if you're sick and tired of doing that every day, make it a theme. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there's like something online you can go to, but do like a movie generator and it will calculate or generate a movie. And then do five days, for five days a week, five different movies and dress in theme of that movie. So if it's like Star Wars, dress in like a Star Wars theme. Or if it's like, um, I don't know, Rocky, dress like you're about to get, like put on a robe, put on some shorts, like you're about to go into a fight. And then when you're on the phone, you know, you're gonna feel like you're, you're doing something a little more fun. You're not just gonna be in, in just your, your pajamas or if you don't go to the office, you're at home, your pajamas, whatever. Go to the office, go on a theme, who cares? Like be different, like change it up, like get out of your comfort zone. 
um, and make these calls and I, you'll feel better. Like I like that a lot. Yeah, that's hilarious. I know what a really good story I heard on another podcast was a, um, a wholesaler who used to make like eight hours a day of phone calls and that's super boring if you're sitting there just making just ripping dials for eight hours a day it gets exhausting but he was like i'm gonna challenge myself i'm gonna play madden while i make the phone calls so he's passing the time he's having a good time but then it was like okay well somebody picks up the phone now i gotta try and um, i'm winning this game while i'm trying to have this conversation with somebody it becomes a challenge and it's like it's different. Could I do it? Probably not. But he found a way to make his work day more fun for himself. Yeah. That, I mean, if, hey, if that works for you, like load up some sort of game of some sort. Or there's this game that's like huge on TikTok that you see all these like, it's like reading a Reddit post. It's like an AI voice reading a Reddit post. Yeah. His background is this game called Subway Surfers. And it's like similar to like Temple Run. Have you ever seen that? Okay. All and right. just them playing it and reading out loud this like Temple sort of captions. But you, hey, make calls, have on your phone or whatever. Uh, if you make like calls through like a computer or something, Subway Surfers or some game like that on your phone or like a Temple Run. I'm gonna check it out now. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, probably will not be any good at it, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like fun. So that's that's a good idea. I like that. Like having some sort of um, have your mind, you know, simulated to get you through those those calls and keep your mind off the nerves because a lot of reasons like people don't make these calls is because they're just simply nervous. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. This is a fear thing. Right. But, I mean, it's exposure. You know, the more you do it, the less nervous you get. Yep. But, I mean, it applies to even not even just, like, l literal fun, like playing a game. But, I mean, I struggled with social media a lot because you see a lot of people making the educational content that's expected with our field of work. And it's just sometimes that can feel so boring and so sterile and there are people who do it great and they do it wonderfully and it's fun to watch but you find yourself like getting sucked into saying like regurgitating the same information and it feels inauthentic and people can feel that whether they know it consciously or not that you're not having fun making that content so it's how can that content be authentic to you? How can you make it real to yourself and more fun for you? Like, it, it, you know you're getting sucked into something more if you're laughing or if it's funny. Like, that's the stuff that catches your eye, not the robot reading back the information <laughs> to you on the other side. Here is what listing your home is like, and here is the process. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I absolutely do not want to hang out with that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> And this is something I've, I've learned with the whole short form video because I'm trying to get super involved with it. I've been doing much more of it, but it's having like a series attached to your to your name. Like I'm big on TikTok, not big, like I'm, I liked it. I'm not big on there yet. TikTok famous? No, I hope one day, one day. Um, but Make them viral. <laughs> I started this year, it's like, what is my mortgage payment? I'll, just, I'll go on Zillow, Redfin. I want to try to find the weirdest house with the weirdest prices and showcase that, mm -hmm. you know? And this is how much your payment's gonna be. I'll just tell you how much some mortgage payment's gonna be. I'll pick out a product that I think someone who's buying this house might utilize, I'm wrong with it. That's funny. Yeah. You could do like, I know people buy like the old school houses sometimes and they turn it into like a house hack for them and their friends because it's like, who's gonna buy an old school house? Yeah. Nobody. Um, but yeah, more, here's your mortgage payment on this abandoned school. Yeah. That would be so funny. Yeah, just like the weirdest thing. The best one I've done so far, um, I haven't made a crazy amount of mine, probably made 10 or so. Um, it has probably like just under 30,000 views. Nice. It's a house in Fishtown in Philly. And it's kind of weird. It's like the exterior is all painted. Um, the exterior is painted all black and the inside is super like new construction, super modern, um, nice. And it was at a pretty good price point. Mm -hmm. for what it was but people in the comments were going off on this house that's so funny <laughs> but that's what like that's how you know you're doing it right is when you have people going off on the comments like i've yeah. heard people make tiktoks where they'll purposely put like wrong information in the tiktok <laughs> because they know then people will go off on the comments and the video will then go viral yeah. and they go well, how could you be so stupid as to put this wrong information in this TikTok?" but it's like well it did what it was supposed to it made my video go viral and now i have other people looking at the important content yeah yeah sarah do you um do you time block your day or do you kind of just like go with the flow that's a good question <laughs> um ideally in an ideal world i would time block my day 
Um, in a real life scenario, I tend to go with the flow. I like to have an idea of what's gonna happen that next day, and I think it's great to structure, say, the night before, um, because my biggest weakness, and I, this is something I'm still working on, and I, I'm sure other people suffer with this too, is getting up and figuring out where to start for the day, mm -hmm. and then by the time I've figured out where to start, I, hours have gone by. Um, so in order to be the most productive, I've had to establish the night before. This, these are the first few things you're gonna do when you get up. Um, but that being said, I, I do try to listen to the energy of the day, whether I wanna be more creative or I wanna be more um, organizational or logical that day, I'll, I'll go with the flow. Yeah. Have you seen, like, have you um, listened to or read any, like, David Goggins content? No. You're familiar with him? Mm -mm, no. He's, like, an ex Navy SEAL and he's, like, an author and he is big into, like, mindset and challenging yourself. Hmm. And one of these things that he said was social media and and it's poison. So the first thing you do, what is like the first thing someone does when they wake up is they look at their phone. Yep. He's like, that's like putting poison into your day. Mm -hmm. Because your mind, like when you wake up, you're refreshed, it's a new day. The first thing you do is you, you just start taking in info and, and it's like putting poison in. So like I'm really trying to get out of the habit where I wake up early, right? I really want to not get up past 7 a.m. Yeah. Like ideally like 6.30, 6, 6.30. Immediately go to the gym. Chug a glass of water. I don't even care about caffeine. Get into the gym immediately. And then come back, and then that's when maybe organize some of the stuff for the day, like emails. And then I set from this time to this time doing content. Yeah. Because I think in this, like, market we're going into, I think, like, content and awareness is going to be, like, the big thing, like, getting market share. Yeah. So content. And then I try to time block, like, activities that are broad because I feel like when I super specific um, like time block things it inhibits my creativity mm -hmm. because I'm always saying okay I can only have this till this time until I'm done yep. so sometimes I need that little bit of like freedom in my day to be creative and come up with new ideas yeah and that's what I'm curious about you with because um, like super routines are great and some people need them but I think there's also like a subset of people who routines are good but then there's to an extent where it can make you feel like pressure, stress, and, and make you less creative. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anything good comes out of forcing yourself to do something when you're not feeling it. And I know maybe that's controversial because people will say, oh, you have to keep doing something even when you're not motivated because that's, you know, commitment. But I think people have seasons through your day and through your year and some of like your winter maybe you're a little less creative and in your summer and your spring you're more in that creative flow and if you're feeling an idea and an idea has come to you lean into it because ideas come in and out and escape very quickly mm -hmm. so acting on that when you feel the urge to is so important and that's why I think a, a loose schedule in your day is great in order to make sure you're getting stuff done but if you feel like you're really you know rowing a boat up river on something take a step back go do something else and circle back around to it nothing good comes from force yeah and I'm gonna talk like putting that in relation to instant gratification versus delayed gratification I do think being consistent and showing up every day mm -hmm. and like doing those tasks, or even if your mind not being like a super routine, but if you just take the time to go to the gym at least or do some sort of activity five days a week, let's just let's just keep to the work week to make it easy, right? Yeah. Five days a week. And you push yourself to make one piece of content per day. And then you push yourself to sit down and make those two hours of calls, whatever kind of task that you don't really want to do, but you have to do per day if you just show up and stay consistent if you don't get a direct result from doing that your business will get better and you will see progress from it mm -hmm. yeah and it's tracking that progress over time especially i mean it's the same with the gym you would track your progress in any way on a daily basis you're not seeing progress but you keep going for that long-term success. And same thing with your business. You know, you're not probably gonna get a lead on that first day making phone calls, but add up your calls at the end of the week and you maybe got one lead out of that and now you can measure, okay, I made 40 calls this week, I got one solid lead. Now I know for every 40 phone calls I make, I get a lead and it makes it more exciting for you to stick to that because you know with the consistency there is a reward at the end. Yeah. and. I wanted to go into the story where 
talking about open houses, like, because you do them a lot, but it's also a numbers game when it mm-hmm. comes to getting clients and, and referrals from an open house. So tell me about, um, you know, your open house and how you met, you know, clients you've worked with. Yeah, so I do open houses both in New Jersey and Philadelphia. Um, and I have bounced back and forth between having like a, the typical sign in sheet that you have everybody sign in when they come through. And also, a strategy that we use on our team is just um, writing down the person's information as you're talking to them. Because as we talked about, like with the active listening, if you're writing down notes as you're talking to the person, it makes them feel like you are listening and what they're saying is important. So I, I've done the strategy. I like to grab people's information on the sign in just to you know put them in my database, and that's nice. But those tend not to be the leads that pan out. The leads that do pan out are the ones that I've made the connection with and like actively asked for their information after we've built rapport as opposed to just asking them to sign in as a means of uh, that's just what you do when you come to an open house so especially i have a client that i'm working with right now that um i'm i the open house was in new jersey but she's and we're listing her home in philadelphia because we had a conversation and i asked her has anybody taken the time to give you a value on your home and she said no and i asked her for her email address so i could provide her with some resources and that just felt like more like i knew she felt like i was listening to her and providing her value as opposed to just trying to shake her down for business right and that's that's the thing to you you showed up you were consistent mm-hmm there was sure there was like weekends or Saturdays you woke up and you're like, oh, I don't want to go to this open house. More often than you would like to admit, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but like you showed up and you're consistent and you're going to see reward for that. Mm-hmm. And it might not be tomorrow. And it might not be the week after. Mm-hmm. It might not be the next 30 days. Yep. But just keep showing up and you will eventually see results. Yeah. And it even on the days where you have just one person show up, don't let that get you down because my first sale was an open house that I had one guest come through and they ended up being my clients and I closed my first home with them, but I was bummed the whole rest of the day. I said, what a waste of time. It was a beautiful summer day. I only had one person come through this open house. I bought snacks, I bought drinks. I felt like it was a waste of money in the grand scheme of things when I closed on that home with them did the $50 I spent on snacks and the two hours I stood there doing nothing matter no it was worth every ounce of time and every penny yeah and that and besides $50 there was no cost to do that exactly and you don't have to do that that if that's a barrier to entry for you then you don't have to do that it was and it has been something that I've mostly eliminated from my open houses Mm -hmm. but um yeah, it's free. You're offering another listing agent help, so they should be more than grateful for the assistance that you're you're offering to them. But yeah, it's it's a low cost way to get leads. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, most people do not eat healthy. Most people do not work out consistently. Most people do the absolute bare minimum just to get by with their job and just to make enough to pay their bills. But if you're willing to put in the extra effort to just show up to Be mindful of your nutrition. Be mindful of exercise. Be mindful of your spirituality and your mental health. And then you're able to show up in your work and give everything you have into it. And you're able to go to bed that night knowing what you're gonna do the next day and you're able to show up and do it again and you stay consistent to that, your life will absolutely change. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So that's amazing. (laughs) And I want you to talk to me, you know, just I want to wrap up here, but you had actually fired your first client after you quit or something, something like that. Can you tell me something about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I actually, when I started uh, real estate, I know they usually recommend, you know, save up some money or don't quit your full time, you know, W-2 job before you jump into real estate full time. Um, and I am the kind of person who likes to jump 100% in with my full full force right away. So I ignored all of the advice. I quit my job and I started as soon as I got my license. Um, so I was running on, you know, almost no money. And I got a lead from the team that I was on at the time um, to, you know, obviously show homes in, in uh, New Jersey, but it wasn't an ideal area. It wasn't where I wanted to focus my business. It wasn't in a good 
budget. So I was already feeling like unaligned with the client and unaligned with our goals. It didn't feel like a good fit. And on top of that, whenever they would, you know, they were texting and emailing and the, the vibe was off. It was just not a good fit personality wise. And I was having stress dreams, like not being able to sleep, tossing and turning, like anxiety dealing with this client. Um, and I did desire, decide to fire them as as a, a client and send them elsewhere in, in the best way. You know, I offered to find them someone in the area they were looking in and, and give a good referral. Um, but I had no right to fire anybody. <laughs> I was a brand new agent. I should have been like scooping up all the leads I possibly could and being quote unquote grateful for what I got. Um, but I knew that wasn't the way I wanted to build my business, the the foundation from the start. I wanted to be the kind of real estate agent who worked with people I wanted to work with, and they just weren't the ones for me. Um, so on the outside, it seemed really silly, and anybody else would be like, what the heck are you doing mm-hmm. giving away a lead as a new agent? But I've just, I had done that before when I worked in nutrition and just taken every lead just because they're a lead and just because they're money. Um, and it will drain you, it'll drain your mental health and it'll burn you out and will affect your business in all the wrong ways. Yeah. 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 That's, that's um, a really big realization to have with yourself is, you know, not selling your soul. Right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you can sell out and you can try to appease to everyone. But if it's going to drain you and affect other parts of your life that are going to bring you down, that's probably going to bring down your business. Yeah. You know, even if it's like I've seen like things on um, LinkedIn where people are like, you know, we have this high performing employee, but they're a plague to the team. Mm -hmm. And then when that person is eventually let go, even though they're super high performing, the team comes up and performs better overall and increases more productivity. Mm. And it's just better because you're not having that. So if you bring in those bad energies into your workflow, then it's probably gonna affect your whole business overall. And that's not productive to building your business. No, yeah, if I had held on to them and you know continued not to get good sleep or feel anxiety, that energy is gonna carry into every other interaction that I have with people. And that holds true for everything in life. If you're doing things that you feel unaligned with, that energy is felt. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sarah, this was amazing. (laughs) Yeah. No, I love talking mindset with you. So (laughs) this is a bunch of fun. Yeah, I love it. Um, And how do people find you? What what are some of your social media tags? Yeah, so my social media, I'm just on Instagram mainly. That's my first name, Sarah with an H. Uh, period and then my last name is B U S L E W I C Z. Um, I feel free to send me a message. I mostly happen in my stories. I love posting like my showings and and crazy things I see in houses when we we go out to look. But yeah, and I'm trying to branch into TikTok a little bit too. <laughs> I I'm, haven't landed completely on a name, but right now I'm sold by Sarah. No oh. no punctuations. A lot of. Uh, good Sarah handles are already taken. Yeah. People love to, I mean, obviously sell starts with S, so sure. people <laughs> jump on that real quick. But yeah, right now it's sold by Sarah and I'm figuring out my voice on TikTok, but if you wanna find me there, you can too. Beautiful, I love it. Yeah. Stay tuned for some TikTok content from Sarah and then make sure to give her a follow on Instagram. And again, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, this thank is you. fun. Awesome, thanks everyone. Stay tuned for next episode.